Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this second episode, looking at A4s, we're going to be looking at this Hornby tender-driven Sir Nigel Gresley locomotive that uh, belongs to the same person as the uh, Trix Lilliput model we looked at last week. So I'm going to put this on the track, give it a quick uh, test with some power to see if there's any life in this at all. Uh, it appears to be in very good external condition otherwise, just a bit dusty. And when applying power, absolutely nothing happened. The loco was completely dead. So we're going to have to strip this one down as well and have a look inside, see if we can reactivate this A4. Now, people may have seen me do uh, ring field motor services before in the past, but I'll, uh, I'll obviously cover all bases again in this video. And nothing I did here, nothing at all got that loco to draw any sort of power. So gently unclipping the tender body shell there, we can see this is a standard ring field setup from the late 80s, early 90s. And I'm just going to um, remove some of this thick earwaxy type grease that's around the motor spindle there. And I've just noticed that there's actually a, a wire loose on this model. So that might have been the reason it wasn't running very well, or running at all actually. Now I've put that wire back on, the model is running, but although you can't hear it because of the voiceover, was making the typical horrible screeching noise that some of these ring fields do. So just using a screwdriver there, I just lever the motor block out of the tender subframe. The middle wheel is a floating axle that's just there for decoration. Although interestingly, the drive wheels on this are of the spoked variety, and the middle wheel there you can see is a solid disc. To remove the brushes and springs, I very gently pull up the brush retainers and then tip them out onto the workbench. Although typically with these models, they are stuck in the holder. This is not uncommon. So just gently prising the spring out there. It pulls one of the brushes out, which looks to be quite worn and does actually have quite a buildup of old carbon on it. The other spring comes out, but the other brush is stuck solid in there on the commutator. So we're going to have to strip this down and clean it all up. Gently unclipping the motor faceplate there, you can see there's the errant brush stuck in loads of gunky horrible carbon and old grease the commutator though looks shiny is actually quite dirty so initially i use a cotton bud and methylated spirits to remove some of the dirt and then to polish off the more um the burnished parts of the commutator faceplate i use my fiberglass pencil to clean off all that old carbon deposits and then i use a cotton uh, a toothpick sorry to clean out the gaps in the commutator faceplate itself allowing the buildup of carbon in these gaps will cause erratic running short circuits and could eventually burn your motor out so once that was all clean i used a cotton bud and mess there to polish it all up and after i'd used the fiberglass pencil i'm now going to remove all the gears by removing that brass retainer and Removing all the ring field drive gears off here just to give them a thorough clean up and to remove any hair and fibers that's wrapped around the gear spindles. By removing all these gears, you can see there that it is quite dirty. Again, the cotton bud and methylated spirits will aid in removing some of this horrible dirt. And there you can see what I was on about. There is a wrap around of hair and fibers from one of the gear spindles. So I'll just uh, fast forward this footage now of cleaning up the motor plate there the gears themselves were quite um, greasy and oily so i give these a clean in a dry paper towel they didn't have any burrs or anything on them so they didn't need any sort of sanding down and on this brass retaining plate here you can see just how much dirt there is on this so this was all cleaned off with a cotton bud of methylated spirits just to remove it all before reassembling the gears i put some small amount of silicon grease on the gear spindles so that they are correctly lubricated for when I reassemble the model. The gears are replaced in the exact opposite order of what we took them off. The two smaller gears go on the lower spindles and engage with the drive wheels. And the double cog, the large one with the small gear on the um, embossed on the back, goes face down onto the upper spindles and engages with the actual motor worm gear and the two smaller gears. So these just all press on. And then that brass retaining clip goes on. This goes on one way with the slightly um, bent up part facing upwards. Goes through that top 
clip and then holds the gears in place. The Ringfield motor faceplate was given a thorough cleaning as we saw earlier there was a lot of carbon buildup and grease on this. So this was all cleaned off with the cottonwood and methylated spirits until it had all been removed and that includes all that horrible gunky grease off the front of the motor plate there. Once that was thoroughly cleaned, this was clipped back into the um, holes on the motor itself. And then a small amount of silicon grease was put on the motor spindle where we removed that horrible old grease from earlier on. Now that's all been done, the brushes have been cleaned and refinished to remove the dirt and to flatten them off a little bit as they were quite worn but they were worn at an angle. So these were replaced into the brush holes, the springs were put back and the brush retainers were gently pushed down to hold them in place. Once this was all done, I am going to attach this crocodile clip here to one of the motor terminals and then use the other wire from a controller on the opposite side and the motor is running lovely and is now not screeching at all. That uh, horrible screechy noise due to the old lubrication has ceased. Now that the motor is running fine, I'm going to hold it upside down and just give these wheels a polish with the fiberglass pencil to remove the buildup of carbon and track dirt. And once the wheels are nice and shiny and the, and the dirt has been removed, I then polish them up and finish them off with a cottonwood soaked in methylated spirits. I also run a cottonwood over the traction tired wheels there just to remove the buildup of dirt and grime on these. These were, very, um, these were in very good condition, they weren't cracking and they were very tight to the wheel still. The middle floating axle was also given a thorough clean up as any dirty wheels left on this model will transfer the dirt back to your track once you've got the model back on the layout. So this was polished up with a fiberglass pencil as there was quite a lot of that horrible black uh, carbon build up. This was then put back into the motor housing and then the whole ensemble was clipped back into the tender subframe and the floating wheel on the back of the tender frame was also thoroughly cleaned so that all the wheels on this tender were sparkling. Once everything was in place the wires were all clipped back into place and made sure that the connections were tight and then I'm just going to test it there to make sure everything's working correctly which it is. So the tender drawbar and the wheels on this tender are picking up electric as they should. The tender body shell was given a thorough dusting with the old paintbrush. As I said earlier this model was caked in dust so it's obviously been sat in the shelf or something somewhere. But other than being generally just dusty the model is in very good condition. The tender body shell then just clips back into place with little force and it, that's the tender rebuilt and we'll turn our attention to the loco. Now as we've seen before with the Lilliput one last week, um, actually this model is actually in a bit worse condition. It's missing the whistle and a couple of handrail knobs. But as with last week's model, the front of the loco is used for pickup only. And as this is quite an older model, this only picks up electric from one rail. Using a cotton bud down some warm soapy water, I cleaned the running boards as they were quite dirty. As you can see by those cotton buds, there was quite a lot of dirt on this model. I'm not sure if it had been previously owned by a smoker, but it did look suspiciously like nicotine. Now to remove the chassis, you just simply unclip the two clips in the cylinder block and the rear clip disengages, allowing you to work on the loco chassis. This was given a dusting over and then it was inverted and all the wheels were cleaned initially with a cotton bud and methylated spirits again but some of the more caked on dirt was polished off with my fiberglass pencil now this chassis proved to be quite um, problematic I'm going to straighten the tender drawbar pickups here these were bent so these were first cleaned with a cotton bud and mess and then re-bent into the correct shape with my needle nose pliers but as I was saying this chassis proved to be quite problematic what I'm doing here is I'm just giving a slight amount of oil to the linkages, having cleaned the wheels up, thinking that all it needed was a good wheel clean and then this A4 would be back on track. But now that I've cleaned the wheels, I'm going to put the chassis and the tender back together, 
Test it on the track with the controller, and again, this loco was absolutely dead. No life in it whatsoever. Although I know that the tender motor is working fine, as we've just tested and serviced it. So there's obviously something wrong with the wheels on this model. So I've put the body back on the um, chassis for ease of maintenance now. It's in the loco cradle, and I'm just testing the wheel pickups here. And when you put the power to the driving wheels, there's nothing. I even try picking up power from the same side, as I've had it before where somebody's taken a model apart and put the wheels on the loco part in the wrong way. But no matter what I did, this front of the loco would not pick any electric up. It just would not pick up any current to allow the motor to spin. So I'm going to have to strip it down even further and I remove that tender pony truck and the front pony truck. And then remove the keeper plate that holds the wheels in place. Upon opening this up, I find that it is actually quite dirty in here. As you will see on this cotton bud with mess on it, there is a lot of sticky grease. So maybe the axles are being insulated by this old lubrication. So I spend some time now and I thoroughly clean this up. I clean all the axles and all the axle holes. Again, there are no proper bearings on this front of the chassis here. The axles simply sit in holes in the die cast chassis. So I clean it all up and remove as much of this grease as I possibly can. And towards the end of working this, the cotton buds were coming away clean. So I was confident that these had all gone. We'd, we'd got rid of all that old grease. So once all the grease had been removed and the axle, had been, axle holds had been cleaned out, I put in some Pico Power Lube just to lubricate the axles and to aid in electrical pickup. As you will see um, shortly, I'm just showing you the footage here. I've, I've speed this footage up just to show how long it actually took to clean these axles. They were proper greasy. I've never come across a tender drive loco with so much hardened grease around the axles as this model had. And as I said, here's the power lube, which will, uh, it's conductive lubricant, so it should not only lubricate the axles, but also aid in electrical pickup. So once the three driving axles on the loco part there had been lubricated, I refitted the tender drawbar and the wheel keeper plate there, and then we'll test the model for a second time while it's inverted in the loco cradle. There is a spring there that holds this rear Katazi truck in place, and you must not lose that spring, otherwise the model will not run properly. So here we are again with the second test and again to my absolute amazement there is still no power going through to the motor. So I was at a loss now because if I put the power on the screws it was going through. But the wheel treads were just not picking up any electric whatsoever. Nothing I did while testing this would get that motor to run. And it was beyond frustrating. I'm just wondering there if the wheels are in the correct way which they are, but one thing I did notice was that when I tested it on the track, if I pushed down on the front of the loco, the model would run, but as soon as I released the pressure, it would die again. So there was definitely something wrong with the axles on this loco. So I put it back in the loco cradle and completely stripped it down, rods and everything, I completely stripped it, um, and then tested it with the cables, off the controller to make see if it was shorting out and it wasn't so it proved that the wheels were not picking up any electric whatsoever this was very puzzling and it was something i'd never come across before when doing one of these hornby tender drive models up however looking at it later on i noticed that on the axles one of the axles has this protrusion which the actual axle sits in which i've circled here in red and it became apparent that this was actually coated in a, well, what can only be described as like a varnishy type thing. It had been, I don't know if it had been painted on by the previous owner or it, had, it was just a buildup of some sort of dirt. But I scraped it off with a flat bladed screwdriver and then wiped the axle clean with a cotton bit of mess. And then when I tested it, as you can see there, the motor is spinning. And all the axles had been, had this varnish type stuff on them that was insulating them from the chassis. Once I'd cleaned them all, as you can see here, it had returned the A4 back into running condition. 
and you can see it being bench tested complete with all the side rods reconnected. If you've got a loco you'd like to see featured in a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelhours at gmail.com and we'll have a look again at sent over and who knows it may even feature in an episode all of its own. This Ringfield Tender Drive A4 really was puzzling and as I just said I've never come across a loco that's had the axles um, whether it deliberate or not but they would have been deliberately insulated from the chassis block so that it wouldn't run. Maybe this was done because it was a display piece, who knows. But now Sir Nigel Gresley is now thundering around the dining room table with some Gresley teak stock. Thanks again for watching an episode of Trash to Track. Please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.